This is uh, Nicolas uh, Alexiou from uh, the Hellenic American uh, Projects in um, the Department of Sociology at Queen's College CUNY. And uh, today in our series of uh, oral uh, um, history archives, we are very happy and pleased to have um, uh, with us and have um, an interview with Mr. Dimitrios Manuselis, who is uh, an architect uh, and painter, or a painter who happened to be an architect. Dimitri, thank you very much for uh, your consent to participate in this oral history interview for the Greek American community uh, to HAP and uh, to Queen's College uh, CUNY. Uh, welcome, and let's start uh, by saying for the record that today is March 14, 2023, and our film director is uh, Mr. Zafiris uh, Haitidis and um, the Anthropos, and um, let's start by stating your name and where you were born and grew up, and a few things about uh, the background of your family. Uh, thank you for having me to do this interview, I appreciate it, so, and um, I was born in, um, I was born in Hanya, Crete, in 1955. I uh, grew up in Athens. Uh, my family moved to Athens when I was five and uh, grew up in Athens, uh, finished, um, almost finished high school in Greece, actually finished high school here in, in, in New York. And we em uh, the family emigrated in 1971 and um, I finished uh, high school and thereafter I went, I attended uh, college uh, I graduated from Queensborough Community College uh, with a degree in um, design and art. But before we go there, yes, uh, tell us a few things about the background of the family. Uh, where your mother and the father uh, were, um, were my, from? My, my family, uh, parents and my brother, my entire family is from Hanya. Uh, we lived in. Uh, we lived. So in they, they are true hardcore Cretans. Hardcore Cretans. My father. My father is family is from Sfakia, and my mother is from uh, Kisamos. We were all born in in Hanya, in the city of Hanya, until I was about five years old, where we had to go to Athens because I needed to have some. Uh, I had a little uh, issue with my leg, so I had to be. I needed to have uh, physical therapy. For a few years, mm -hmm. and uh, thereafter, we uh, I grew up in Kukaki, uh, right under Philopapu, right under Philopapu, and I went to high school uh, in Plaka. The first three years of high school I did in Plaka, and thereafter uh, Exarchia. So when the junta happened in, in, in Greece, you were there in 1967. Oh yes, I was. I was. I was there in 1967. I remember the very day going to school and uh, there were tanks on the streets and there were tanks on the hill of uh, you know strategic locations for the army and uh, they turned us away to go home and we couldn't be happier because we had a day off of school we of course we didn't know what was I was your I was, family uh, I was 12 years old when the, the um, your family the, were awarded and they wanted to go back to Crete to avoid um, uh, the main uh, problems in, in, in Athens, or you stayed in Athens? No, we stayed in Athens. Uh, my parents uh, were, not, were not politically motivated uh, people. You know, they, they, were, they were center, not left, not right. And uh, my father had a certain proclivity to bohemianism, I might say. And... Um, and then we came, we came to New York in 1971, which was the period during the junta mm -hmm. regime. Uh, but we didn't have a problem emigrating. You, there were you, no political uh, issues. How you came? Uh, you flew or boat? No, we flew. We flew. At the time, at the time it was, we flew, we came in, we, uh, we had our papers, green cards, social security, pretty much at the airport. It's exactly 50... Uh, How come you had uh, American papers? It was somebody else? Oh, we, we went to... Uh, by invitation. You know, my, my father's brother had been here since 1960. So you needed to have an invitation, so to speak, 
to uh, to come. So we came, you know, with regular, you know, filing papers in Greece, I suppose, and and I was 15 at the time, so I wasn't, you know, too much involved or aware of of this the process. And you went to school here. I went to high school here in the Bronx. You knew the language already, or no? But uh, but I had a I had a vested interest in the English language because I was. Already in 1965-66, with the British invasion of rock and roll, I was very much involved in that since I was very young. The Beatles, the Stones, the Kings, the Animals, and so forth. And uh, I remain to this day uh, uh, a rock and roll encyclopedia. And um, so I had this... Um, I, pick up, I pick up language pretty fast, you know. I, Although... Uh, you you had uh, an experience of a bigger city like Athens, uh, which was different from Hanya, but also New York was a big city. Uh, was it there any cultural shock for you, or how how you remember the the, the early period uh, being in in New York? Um, personally, it was. Um I fell in. I fell in and adjusted very fast. I was, like I said, I started going to these rock and roll concerts. You know, I attended rock and roll concerts. I used to go down to Union Square. There was the Academy of Music, uh, the Central Park uh, open air concerts in the summertime, uh, the Phil Maurice. I, I missed the Phil Maurice, the legendary Phil Maurice, and the only. Uh, the only problem that was in my mind was I, at the time that I went to high school, I went to high school in the Bronx and there were a lot of gangs in New York. There were a lot of gangs. It was a little bit of a dangerous area. I went to Adlai Stevenson uh, High School. And at that high school, I, I developed an interest in architecture. So I stayed after school hours and I took a class with a gentleman who I, whose name I remember. He was Mr. Fumo was his name. A nice gentleman with a nice goatee, like a Spaniard. And uh, there were two or three of us. And um, I studied architectural drawing with him after, after hours, two, three days a week. I, in, I was about 16 or 17 years old. You felt any racial or... Uh, racial tensions or ethnic discrimination against you uh, going to schools uh, in the Bronx? No. No, I did not. I, didn't, I did not finish high school in the Bronx. I finished high school. Uh, about a year later after we arrived in New York, we moved to Astoria. And I went to um, William uh, Bryan, Bryan uh, High School in, in Astoria. And there were a lot of Greek students there. I fell in. Because I, the 70s was a decade of mass immigration from Greece. Or? Yes, yes. No, but I no, I didn't. They spoke the I didn't feel any. Or, uh, I didn't feel any uh, uh, racial tension uh, or any discrimination, and I picked up the language pretty pretty fast. Uh, when we came and we lived in the Bronx, um, I worked in a in an Italian delicatessen that had Greek products, because the area of Pelham Bay in the Bronx at the time, and, and still has, but if less so now, had a sizable Greek community. So there was this Italian delicatessen that had Greek products, and uh, they put me to work there, and after about a week or so, the, the owner, there were two Dominics, Dominic and Dominic, they were, they were American-born Italians. They said to me, Dimitri, uh, you're a good boy, but we don't want you to be washing dishes. We want you to be serving people. So learn some good English and come back in two, three months to work. So, and so it was. So I went to, back to work again there. And, and, uh, and, and your parents also worked here? My parents worked here, yes, yes. My father worked in a restaurant. His brother owned a restaurant, one of those... Uh, McDonald type fast food restaurants uh, in, in Yonkers and my mother was uh, stay at home. Uh, they like being here in, uh, in the States or they miss Greece? No, they, 
they were they were they were reconciled with their life here. They, they what about it, you? Yes. You visit your friends in Greece. You miss Hanya. Well, my childhood friends, I pretty much never saw again. Uh, we left Greece. I was fifteen. By the time I went back to Greece. Uh, I was 24 years old, the first time I returned to Greece. So it was after I, 10 years? Nine years later, nine, nine years, years later. later. I did a program with uh, the architecture school, I did a program a semester in Rome with Pratt Institute. So during the uh, Easter recess, I flew to Greece and it was the first time. So my childhood friends, who I, I remember some of them of course and their names and faces, but I never saw them again. Um, in Greece, I have, you know, I had, we had a large family, uh, my father's family, brother, my uncles, my cousins, and my aunts, and those, and later on, in later years, I also had a lot of friends, many Greek friends who, having lived in New York, returned to Greece, you know, architects, mostly architects, yeah, at the time, because at the time I was not, uh, involved in, in, in the art, uh, in the art world. And um, so, but New York, from, uh, coming to New York for me was kind of a, uh, the rock and roll paradise. You know, I, I, I attended many concerts when I was young and I saw many, many bands from the 70s. And it was it was very exciting for me, but uh, yeah. And you never thought to go back and work and live in Greece. You thought that New York is the place for you at that at that time. At that time, yes, yes. I, I did not I did not develop a um, a real nostalgia or a yearning to return to Greece until maybe um, twenty years ago. Now, twenty so years ago. What now. a young man, uh, professional. Uh, educated, uh, did in Astoria. How was Astoria for for the Greek American at the time? How was Astoria? It was organized. It was um, uh, more Greek. It was more assimilated. How was Astoria at that time? Well, there were all, there were all these uh, Greek students and the Greek associations, um, both in uh, that I encountered both. Uh, in my education, you know, in Queensborough community, there was a, a large group of Greek students. Uh, I did one year in City College, where also there, there was, in a cafeteria, there was like a pool of Greek students. And and then I transferred to Pratt Institute. That's where I finished my, uh, my education. I went to Pratt. And even at Pratt, less or so, there were some Greek students. Not that many. Not that many at the time. So my, uh, but I remember at the time there was um, Dittmar's Boulevard, there were like three or four cinemas in Astoria that showed Greek films, regular cinemas, the, before the advent of uh, DVD or HVAC, if you remember, the, the large cassettes. And, um, and newspapers? Newspapers, uh, we all, we had newspapers coming from Greece, of course, all the newspapers, Ethnikos Kyrikas, the local. Who, is, who is still published mm -hmm. today. And uh, later Proini was published. Later, later Proini, yes, that's right. I remember the radio, the radio with uh, Nikos Panias, Zaniza Kintinos, so, uh, was his nickname, I, I believe. I did, I did meet him. Sandorineu, Tina. Sandorineu, Tina Sandorineu, uh, there was uh, Mikrokosmos, um, the, the Boat. The Boat, yes. Mm -hmm. Where I ha where I held an exhibition, actually, of my, of some of my small architectural uh, drawings. Uh, was uh, your family supportive uh, for you to follow this particular, uh, you know, science? My my family was neutral. My father. Uh, not because they didn't want to or they didn't care. They always just. They were they were neutral. I think I chose my path on my own. Uh, I made I made pathways uh, in my life more or less on my own. Um, I mean, the emotional support of the parents was always there. There was no question. But um, uh, economically and um, uh, professionally, there was no particular incentive or push. 
or guidance in a certain direction. Um, and um, you started working with uh, um, American companies or clients, but you also had Greek clients. Is there any similarities or differences uh, My, in your interactions? Uh, yeah. I might mention that from the age of 15 until when we came to New York until the age of 24 when I graduated, for nine and a half, ten years I worked in restaurants. So I, I worked in many different restaurants as a busboy, as a dishwasher, as a, as a waiter. And, and I always had dealings with the, you know, all these restaurants that were mostly Greek restaurants. Later on, I, I went to work in, in, in American restaurants, in steakhouses, uh, worked in an Italian restaurant in, on Madison Avenue. This was to pay my tuition and to pay my rent because I left my house. I moved out of my house on my own when I was about 20. And I, and I had an apartment, lived in Astoria, always lived in Astoria. <laughs> uh, so I, I always interacted with, with, with the Greek community, but after graduating architecture school, um, professionally, I, you know, I worked in, in several architectural offices as architect and interior designer. And uh, I made friends with, uh, with colleagues. They were all American, mostly American. In my, in my, in my professional life, I had dealings mostly with uh, you know, American people, uh, American or, or various other ethnicities. The Greeks, although they have um, a very strong uh, tradition or re reputation uh, in this particular occupation, right? Um, there are some... Architecture? Mm -hmm. Yes. There are two or three... Uh, very well known, uh, you are also known, but also uh, Cantillis, for example, right? And, and yeah. I'm not known as well as Cantillis, for sure. <laughs> but but uh, you, no, they were, you they knew were... him, you had the chance to meet him? I did meet him once, I met him through, a, through another colleague, yes. Um, I knew a couple of architects through school that were good Greek architects, like uh, I can mention Theo Harris Davis, David, who was a Greek Cypriot, who still teaches at Pratt Institute, actually. And um, what other Greek architects did I know? I knew um, no, Terzis was a well-known architect, Kostas Terzis. They were very much involved in the Greek community. And... Um, but also... Uh, I nev I, and, I, and I did work for a while and collaborated a little bit with uh, Mr. Chris Karastathis. We were we worked together as architects. I did a lot of drawing and design for him. Um, and also, uh, besides the architects, slowly it was um, a strong and obvious representation of Greek Americans uh, in the um, um, in, in the business in other areas like construction, for example, uh, or, or painting. Also, things that they have to do with the general. Uh, uh, B building industry. Building. Uh, uh, yeah. How well, do you, you explain that? Well, through my through archi through my architectural work, because uh, I started, I, I started doing my own design, and I realized a few projects in the uh, in the early '80s and mid '80s. Um, naturally, I met contractors, you know, at var various trades. Um, most of them were Greek. And um, and your opinion about uh, the average uh, behavior was um, good at their work. They wanted to uh, cooperate uh, with you. You had conflict sometimes because Greek can be also opinionated. Hmm. I, I am certain that there is conflicts, uh, Greek or not Greek. Um, I didn't have any, you know, uh, bad experiences with. Um, I did later on uh, renovating my own house. I had a contractor who I had to fire, and I had, uh, you know, some legal problems with. He was Greek, because I trusted him. But all in all, I cannot, you know, I don't have any bitter or bad experiences about. There's a little. There's a little bit of, um, uh, you know. Contractors or professionals from Greece um, tend to be a little bit more um, 
loose, loose about, loose about their work and um, lack of a certain professional ethic. Uh, not so with Greek American, uh, you know, American born Greek, Greek Americans, professionals, architects, or uh, they tend to be a little bit more professional and uh, upright. What is one thing or two things that uh, made you realize that this is your, your calling? What do you like about architecture? You know, I couldn't put my finger on it, but um, as I mentioned, I, I developed this interest in architecture since uh, I was about 15. When I went to high school, I took that after school program. I still have those drawings. And um, I even got, this gentleman, uh, the, the instructor, found me a job working somewhere. I don't remember it now. But after, I, I, when I went to Queensborough Community College, I did not major in architecture. I majored in liberal arts for a couple of years. I, I did pretty much, you know, various electives, English, Italian, and so forth. And then I went back to, maybe something woke in me, and I went back to architecture. I took structural engineering and uh, mechanical drawing and so on and so forth. And after graduating Queensborough Community, I went to architecture school at City College. So I was set in what I was going to do. Art came later. We'll go there. But let's yes. talk about the community um, that you, you never thought to live um, in another neighborhood, let's say Manhattan, where... where I did not, no. It was always more expensive. Only that? Also because uh, it was uh, an ethnic community very well established and settled here in Astoria. You, you prefer to live uh, close to an ethnic community? Or it I, was irrelevant? It was, uh, it was, no, it was irrelevant because I, I commuted to Manhattan pretty much, you know, all the time. I'm also, uh, I am also a cinephile, so from early on, I would I would go to the cinema a lot, and I still do. And so I was in Manhattan all the time. I just never thought of actually moving to Manhattan. It didn't occur to me. I, I lived in Astoria. Uh, we lived in the Bronx, and then in Astoria, and then uh, Long Island City, Astoria, mm -hmm. uh, up until recently. Um, but uh, your home, it is a Greek home. You. Uh, the food, the music, uh, other things that remind you of Greece, they're, they're, they're obvious, they're present um, in your environment at home? No. Not necessarily? Not necessarily, no. My house is a quiet, modern, modern minimalist uh, interior, you know. I no, but if, it if, you, if you eat Greek, if you... Uh, your, oh, yes. Your coffee is oh, Greek, yes. your, yeah. your, your music yeah. is Greek, also the rock and roll yeah, can yeah. be... A uh, great part of uh, all this, but also yeah, I'll, I'll you, you play Greek music too. A little bit, a little bit, yes. I, I, I play but some you're Greek aware music. Of, of things in Greece? No, I uh, marginally. I mean, I don't follow Greek music now. Mm -hmm. I, I do Only know. Only the news. About about music specifically, mm -hmm. after leaving Greece, mm -hmm. except for the Rebetica, Laika, Savopoulos, mm -hmm. and, and a few others, Any I don't music? I don't follow Cretan music a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. a little bit. It's not it's not a it's not the kind of music mm -hmm. I listen to mm -hmm. frequently. And uh, at what point uh, you realize that uh, uh, painting, it is an art that you like to explore and, and, and spend, you know, many, many years. Because it's not an easy thing to paint in New York, is it? Um, I, became, I became interested in painting after reading a book by uh, Arnold Schoenberg, the, uh, the musician, the, musician, yeah. the twelve-tone composer. Mm -hmm. He made some paintings, uh, you know, this was in the 20s before, uh, during the Weimar Republic period. He made some paintings that were very, um, um, some self-portraits that were very, very rough, kind of like um, German Expressionism. And he, he expressed, I think it was, he, he corresponded with Kandinsky, the painter, 
Vasily Kandinsky. Who also had the period in Germany, right? Yes, yes. He was, uh, he, Kandinsky was of uh, mm -hmm. Russian mm -hmm. extraction. And he said to him, I, I desire to paint. It was, it was as simple as that. I have the desire to paint. It was simple as that. And that sentence, that, that expression stayed with me, struck a chord with me. And um, I decided that I wanted to paint. And um, also it was a period in architecture, in architecture school, where there were some architects that were using paint as a medium to present uh, rendering, renditions of buildings or proposals. It went beyond, it went beyond the ink. They used acrylics and they used colors. Um, and I was greatly uh, impressed by suprematism and uh, constructivism, you know, the Russian from the 20s, uh, Malevich and Lisitsky. And they were very painterly. Uh, they, 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 uh, they showed architectural renditions in a very painterly manner. So that struck a chord, and, and that's what I wanted to do. So... so uh you went to school for that? No, I never studied fine. I graduated from architecture school and soon after that I, um, uh, I developed a, a desire to paint. Um, I'm self-taught. I never, I never attended fine art school. Let's see here. This is the work that I did particularly for the για την εταιρεία εδώ. Το έργο αυτό είναι, αυτό το είναι τρίπτυχο το οποίο απεικονίζει ε, σκαλοσχές που είναι και το αντικείμενο της εταιρείας που βρισκόμαστε εδώ ε, οι οποίοι κάνουν εξωτερικές αναπαλαιώσεις και είναι μία αφηρημένη ε, ερμηνεία ας το πούμε σκαλοσχές που σκαρφαλώνουν οι εργάτες για να κάνουν ε, τις επιδιορθώσεις mm -hmm. στα εξωτερικά των κτηρίων. So it is your donation to... This no, this was this was this was a scaffolds. gift. This was a, this was a gift to the company here. Yes, yeah. That, that uh, in a in a very in a very uh, mm -hmm. abstract manner, of course, very things nice. floating in the air. Very nice. Um, and uh, from different from different perspectives. And the material you use? The material I use is uh, ac acrylics, uh, charcoal, pencils. Painted mm -hmm. with uh, brushes and regular. I, I use regular uh, traditional materials. I don't. I don't use uh, glo I, I like my work to be flat, not glossy or shiny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flat, flat. You know, I paint flat. I rarely varnish any work that I do. So I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about these uh, sculptures. Uh, which is something that I have been doing on the side. It's part of also of my um, creative work, and it's um, uh, there's there are sculptures because they're extremely abstract and they're very minimalistic. Uh, you can call them. They have an architectural component because of its because of the, the three dimensionality. Um, but it's a different medium. How how you can do that? How you do that? You find you find uh, you have to remove yourself from paintings in order to enter this, or it is it is part of the artistic expression to experiment and and and, and um, go in depth to other med mediums. Um, it comes, it comes from a desire to create something three-dimensional and freestanding uh, that, has a, that has a relation to architecture mm -hmm. um, and, and structure because it has to stand, right? Uh, it's not architecture because it doesn't serve a function and, um, and uh, it's sculpture because it's freestanding and um, I don't know how to uh, exactly express it, but I've done lots of, lots of drawings and sketches. I haven't realized 
most of them. I would like to do more, but I'd like to do them in this very, very minimal, in this very, very minimal Which fashion. Which is the title of this work? Um, those two pieces are called Demeter, one and two. Demeter, one and two. Hold this one second because I want to show you something. This is actually this has more of a this is actually the way this thing works. Let's see. Okay. It leans, it leans against the wall, projects from it, and it has, the, it has, a, it has a totemic quality about it. Yeah. Just, uh, just a simple conception and a simple execution. Uh, this, is a, this is a sculpture painting that was commissioned and created for this specific uh, space that uh, complements my architectural design for the entrance to the building. Um, uh, this is another medium now that you're using. This is, yeah, this is wood, it's plywood, and I use, um, I use regular commercial paint, which is uh, oil-based paint, uh, combined with acrylic. And it's basically, um, you know, if you look at the composition, it's, it's three similar panels that are, this panel mirrors this in panel, which is inverted. It's the inversion of that. And then there is the, continu the continuity here of the black and white with, you know, the other geometrical elements. And it's supposed to mirror the minimalist composition of this uh, particular steel facade here. How long it takes to uh, this from the moment you perceive it to draw it to to paint it to to, to see how you're going to fit because. On one hand, you have something minimalistic in a space which is huge and gorgeous. Yes, it's also, it's also the proportion of this space. You could see it's narrow and very tall. Mm -hmm. It has this sort of, if you excuse the hyperbole, it's the cathedral proportions. This originally was a model about this big. It was a model of this big, which I reproduced directly the proportions. In other words, I multiplied by four or five, I don't remember what proportion it was, but originally it was a model like this, and this is an exact replica of a smaller piece. Created, of course, to fit this space. Yeah. It could have been, it could have been longer and, and taller. Yeah. We can uh, step outside, if you like, to see the... Um, This entrance is uh, also yeah. It's all impressive. it's all it's all steel. I mean, that sc that scratched panel is it, it. I had nothing to do with that scratching, but it's like a painting in itself. It's uh, it's it's a brushed steel, but it has it, it has a um, a gloss finish on, on it so that it will not drip uh, the rust. Uh, we did that also on the outside because we left it, we left it untreated, and it was red and red and yellow all over the sidewalk. So then we had to apply a varnish, a clear varnish. And and you can and you can see from here that this whole thing is is no more than four inches thick. Yes, it's, a, it's only about this thick. Yes. Yeah. But also, although this is uh, industrial, 
it also includes the sense of an art installation. Yes, you could you could say so. Well, you know, my architectural my, my work my approach to architectural work is uh, minimalistic. It, it's it's a minimal. Uh, it has this minimalist sculpture because there is a mm -hmm. long tradition in the 60s and 70s of minimalist sculpture, which is really um, you could you could call it a little bit banal, mm -hmm. or perhaps not even all that interesting. Αυτό το επιπλάκι εδώ πέρα, έλα να το δεις. Τρομερό, τρομερό, τρομερό. Τρομερό. Και αισθητικά και πρακτικά. Και... Αυτό το ήθελε ο Γιάννης να μπει εδώ πέρα, ευθυγραμμή με αυτό εδώ, για να δημιουργήσει ένα διάδρομο, ναι, να έχουν ναι. ένα πράγμα ναι, λίγα ναι, τα κουλίτσια ναι. εδώ. Αυτό. Και επίσης, κοίταξε να δεις, ναι, ναι. έρχεται η αρμονία αυτή. ευθεία γραμμή ναι. εδώ πέρα. Όλα αυτά τώρα είναι υπολογισμένα, έτσι. To the inch. Και από εδώ και από κάτω ναι, είναι ναι. αυτό. Είπαμε και αισθητική και, αλλά και, και το πρακτικό γιατί αυτή είναι η αξία ναι. της ηλεκτρονικής. Τώρα εδώ είναι this μια, μια τελείω άλλη Yeah, this is a painting from uh, some time ago and you can see the difference. Uh, this is a mostly, um, I would call it like organic expressionism because of these um, rather organic figures that non-specific organic figures it has a sense of uh, futurism it is a bit futuristic yes. yeah. but it has Something you know it has it has elements i can point out elements that structure the painting mm -hmm. you know and gives it a uh, Again, it is a piece painted on, on wood. This is, this is painted on, on wood, yes. yes. Yeah. I still paint on wood, but not this large. And why a circle, not the typical? A circle is a very difficult thing to tackle, to, uh, to approach. You know, the, 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 problem, the problem of how do you square the circle or how do you... How do you square the circle? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I wasn't attempting to even do that. I mean, great mathematicians mm -hmm. have tried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my idea. But, um, and you can see here that this line is not exactly uh, vertical. It's in an angle. Um, but it, uh, it, it sort of um, embraces the edges very nicely. Especially, especially down, especially down here. Okay. We can. Να σου δείξω τα τραπεζάκια. Ναι. Έλα νου πέρα είναι. Αυτά τα δύο είναι. The same idea as my sculpture, the steel. The steel. And then there is, you see there is an angle line here. It's mm -hmm. a very imperceptible line here. And um, this is With glass. a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. yes. More mixed. A little, yeah, a little bit complex. So what I did is I left, I left this area empty. And this here compensates for that space. And this surface Mm -hmm. turns around like a sleeve here to give it a more three-dimensional aspect. Mm -hmm. The person who commissioned me said to me, you're doing your painting in three dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> more yeah. or less. Yeah. Yeah. But to me, it's all the same. This but is interesting. Me, that but to me, it's all the same. Regardless of the medium, you can... Yes, yes. And you I, can express and that. We had, we had in, initially we wanted to put a piece of wood here because they were afraid that somebody, mm -hmm. but this, this is not going anywhere unless somebody falls no, on it. Still, yeah, yeah. it's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And even, and even here in two, dimension, in, in two dimensions here, you see this is metal. I changed from glass to metal instead of making it yeah, all, all like, glass. Uh, and this, and this, this, this is the same thing here. The mixing, I like that. Yeah, yeah the mixing of the, of the material. The similar materials, but the mixing. And then the, and the, the proportions, mm -hmm. cubes and mm -hmm. rectangles. Mm -hmm. So this is the... A very Pythagorean approach. You could, you could say that. I didn't think of it that way, but I, I, def I definitely worked out the proportions, but I didn't have the Pythagorean theorem in mind. My, my first, my first uh, architectural company was called Hypotenuse Design, Hypotenusa. I didn't keep that name. Uh, the later company I had was called Theasis. Interesting. Theasis. So, uh, although you work in American, um, American society, your Greek roots and education yeah, the kind of forward, the, yeah. The, yeah. the philosophy, the culture. Yes. Greek names also happen to be um, impressive and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, if I could use the term, cool. Yeah. Which shows that uh, it is compatible to be a Greek in New York. You see some kind of... You don't have a conflict there to use. No, I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't have a. I mm -hmm. don't have a conflict with my, mm -hmm. with my racial background or my ethnicity. Sometimes when you visit Greece, do you see that it happens the reverse? That uh, the Greeks in Greece they prefer to use American names or English names oh, my goodness. instead of the Greek. How, how yes. do you respond to that? How you I've, react to that? I've, that's the um, xenomania. You know, I, I think that the average Greek woman does not use her Greek name. If Dionysia yinete Denise, if Spiridula yinete Sisi, or Costas yinete Gas, we have beautiful names. We have beautiful names. I collect ancient Greek names. I have a dictionary, A, B, C, D, and I yeah. collect names from the various yeah. uh, Greek books that I read. So uh, we have beautiful names, and mm -hmm. he, you know, Ephemios became Matis, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and our friend James, yeah. Dimitris. But, but now, when you visit Greece, uh, do you feel that you are a Greek in America and an American in Greece? Or? No, I don't feel an American in Greece ever. I feel a Greek in America and a Greek in Greece. Okay. Yes. My, my, my emotional and intellectual uh, roots are very strong in Greece. Yeah. It, it, it's also because I left Greece at a, at a certain age where the, where the mold had already been set. You know, mm -hmm. at 16 mm -hmm. years, I had, a, I had a Greek consciousness. Now, What I mean by that is that, you know, I don't feel any more Greek than I, I, I should mm -hmm. or, I, mm -hmm. or, I, or mm -hmm. I have to be. I am Greek enough, that's all. Happened to be born in Greece. I, I like the culture, I like the history, I like uh, the democratic ideals that were born there. I'm no more nor less Greek and I'm no more nor less proud of, of, of being Greek. However, I don't feel American anywhere. Although you like the culture, the I like, music, I like so, I like some things. Mm -hmm. I like some. There, there are some things that are that you know. There are certain things in an open society that gives opportunities. An open society, mm -hmm. the, a little bit of uh, the privacy, mm -hmm. the op the openness. Um, mm -hmm. Things have become a little bit um, deteriorated the yeah. last few years due to some political developments. Uh, I see. But. Um, As I mentioned before, it, it, if, I, if, I had a, if I had a choice and I could, and I should be able, I don't see why, it, uh, uh, I, would, I would rather live in, in Greece. I would rather live in Greece. In Crete? I, I wouldn't, I would, in Crete or in Athens? Not necessarily, in Athens. In Athens, Athens yeah. I like, the, I like the cosmopolitan, you know. I need to be near the bookstores, mm -hmm. the cafes, mm -hmm. the restaurants, the museums. Uh, It's a, it's, a, it's a better quality of life, in, in, my, in my estimate. As far as concerned, the architectural uh, um, you know, point of view of Athens, uh, 
part of, of the neoclassical Athens was destroyed in the 60s and 70s to have some monstrous buildings. Yes, the international how, how, style. How do you feel as an architect? Because you come to New York or in America in general and you see the ancient Greek designs being in most of uh, <laughs> the, the federal buildings or the public buildings, etc. And here you see the presence of Greece in architecture in the cities, in American cities. Yes. But in Greece yes. we, we destroyed um, lots of the traditional designs. I, ha I have great admiration for traditional Greek architecture and um, the neoclassical buildings in, in, in Athens and in other parts of Greece that were built mostly by Germans, uh, you know, when the Bavarians became, you know, the king of, of Chiller Greece. Again, uh, Chiller and, and those architects, yeah, those neoclassical buildings, they're beautiful. I am, uh, I like, a, a, I like a modernism, a classical minimalist modernism, mm -hmm. um, not the average uh, polykatechia, you know, mm -hmm. apartment building that you see all over Athens, the sprawl of Athens, that's, that's, that's different, that's ugly mm -hmm. internationalism. Um, but I also don't support the idea of doing a traditionalist architecture. Okay. You can, you can, you should not build a, a building and have a, you know Doric or Corinthian columns or you know decoration that goes back to two thousand years. You should move, you should move forward and respect the old but create the new, because the modern, the the, the international style has has an unlimited vocabulary, whereas the classical canon is fixed, it's set. It's beautiful and it's admirable, but not to be imitated. I was wondering that uh, if we learn any lesson from uh, the pandemic, the lockdown and the isolation, and uh, if uh, you think uh, architecture can play a significant role and have a contribution to redesigning a city, redesigning neighborhoods, mm -hmm. uh, this constant uh, struggle between uh, the public space and the private space. And the private space. There, there are always a, there's always attempts at, um, at creating public spaces within the envelope of a building that, that we've seen the last few years. Um, taking into consideration um, uh, green environments where uh, where rooftops uh, a lot of the buildings now feature rooftops that are undulating that are rooftop gardens this this is a new technology of creating rooftop gardens with uh, with irrigation uh, and so forth and um, but there's always the problem of, of speculative building you know, a lot of uh, the, the trend and the tendency is to create buildings that are either for the very affluent, uh, very expensive uh, townhouses and high-rises like uh, the Trump Tower and so forth, uh, buildings that you know can only that are only approachable or available to the very very few mm -hmm. and wealthy, uh, and at the same time there are I think there are architectural uh, practices that try to create public spaces, not only in the United States, but throughout the world. And I think that in China, for example, because I've been following a little bit architecture in China, because of its vast undeveloped spaces, they do create, uh, they do create um, very good modern architecture, very good yeah. modern architecture that does not, um, that has no um, Symbolical meaning, you know, there's no symbolism within the okay. building itself. It, you know, the the building does not represent something else. It's not a duck, and it's not a, it's not a, uh, you know, a hut or something. But uh, I think there's a consciousness for uh, creating uh, public spaces and also uh, autonomous building. I mean, China has invested a lot into what we call uh, uh, green uh, energy. In, uh, green right? energy, right. yes, yes. Here too, here too, yes. Here, uh, in some cases, some uh, some of the buildings now have to conform to certain codes that dictate that the building be 
quote-unquote green. Uh, no pollution, no emissions, mm. uh, no gaseous emissions. So it has almost become um, a paramount and um, voluntarily you have to uh, create you know, uh, a building that is friendly to the environment. Yeah. B beyond the aesthetic mm -hmm. principle and appearance of the building that, that can be um, aesthetically beautiful and modern and to also integrate uh, green practices, you know, environmentally sensitive uh, materials and, and, uh, and forms. Yeah. It coincided with a period where I did my, uh, the very, very first architectural work that I realized was Dimitri's Cafe. It was on Spring Street. Uh, it was a small coffee shop, ice cream shop. Uh, Dimitri had been my employer when I was 17 years old. Him and his partner uh, had an ice cream store on uh, near St. Vincent's Hospital called Grandpa's. And I worked there the year that I was graduating from high school uh, in ice cream. So later on, when I, when I, when I finished uh, college, I ran into somebody and, and they said to me, Dimitri is looking for you. He's opening a store in Soho and he wants an architect. So that was my first commission, my very, very first uh, commission as an architect. I designed that store. And his baker, who used to bring him quiche and pies and so forth, wanted to open a restaurant in the East Village. This was in 1983. He wanted to open a restaurant in St. Mark's Place in the East Village. So I started going to, you know, I was hired. I designed that restaurant that was called Rapid Algebra. I named the restaurant Rapid Algebra. And um, I started uh, spending time in the East Village, and that's when the East Village art scene was happening. You know, Jean Michel Bascouillard, uh, Patty Astor, Andy Warhol. And so I was going to those galleries all the time. And naturally, I wanted to emulate and do the same. Mm -hmm. And also you found the connection between architecture and painting? Well, there is, a, you know, in my painting there is a, there is a, a structure or, a, or, or a, a layering that is reminiscent of architectural composition. Tell us uh, about the process. Uh, how you conceive, uh, um, you know, a particular painting? How that happens? How 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 you where you get your inspirations, or, or you have a schedule to do that? Or you have uh, you do research? How you decide uh, also what material to use? Before we go there, I need to, I need to mention to you how I started painting for real because I, I painted I painted a lot, and then um, in the early nineties, around nineteen ninety two, I remember. Through my friend uh, Karastafis, I met Christos Saracatianos, the, uh, the painter who passed away recently. And he's the one who told me that, Dimitri, you need to do this. I showed him what I was doing, uh, some paintings I was doing. And he said to me, these, these are very nice, but you have to do them large. Scale is important. And I said, Christos, you know, I don't even know how to stretch canvas. I never learned. He says, I will teach you. So he taught me how to stretch canvases. And um, the, first, the first few months after he showed me, I produced about 16 canvases, four feet by four feet, which I still have some of them. And well, I was well on my way now to being, a, you know, slowly being a painter while at the same time working as an architect. Yeah. And you had a chance to exhibit some of it here in Astoria with the community or elsewhere in Manhattan? Well, I've had several exhibitions. I've had some in group shows, a couple, two or three uh, in, in the year. I think my first personal solo exhibition was in 2002, I think, at the Andres Art Gallery in Chelsea. 
I had two or three exhibitions with Andre Zar. And then I had an exhibition at uh, uh, the famous Kuros Gallery. It was a time when there uh, were a few Greek Americans who had, uh, who had uh, galleries. Uh, is this true anymore? Kuros uh, was, a, a Kuros, was a historic gallery. Yes, many, Kuros many was a historic gallery. I had a very nice experience with uh, Mr. Camillo. Um, Greek gal Greek owned gallery. After this generation is a decline, I think. Right? Yes, even even now, I don't think there's any Greek owned uh, gallery. I don't know, except here. Except here, yeah, yeah presently, yes, uh, mosaic. Um, no, I had my yeah, I had I had various group shows. Had my work inserted in various group shows. Uh, and some of it was at the it was some of the architectural things that I were doing. They were they were painterly, but were more architectural compositions, perspectives, and so forth. And they were small works. They were small well, works. You had any influences either from American painters or otherwise, or Greek Americans, because the Greeks also had a tradition within the American uh, art movement. Yes. Um, you had any influences from them? You knew them. You were aware of them at the time. I was, I was, um, I was aware. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bookworm, and I read. I read a lot, and I read a lot about uh, about art. Um, I I didn't meet any of the Greek artists that were famous at the time. There was, Stamos uh, was here. Stamos was Daphnis, here. Right. Daphnis. Um, I met Stamos only once. Uh, Antonakos. Stephen Antonakos, um, and some contemporaries who, whom I know, Despo, Magoni, uh, Morphy, Gikas. But before that, no, I didn't have any, um, I, I, would, I, I was not aware of any, there was Krisa, and um, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of, uh, of another one who is still alive, uh, Bengli's? Bengli's died. Bengli. Yeah. She passed away, yes. So no, my influences came. My influences came from well, may, maybe maybe she's alive, Beglis, but she's in Greece, I think. She, she, lives in Greece. she might be. Yes, yes. Um, my influences were mostly abstract expressionism, um, constructivism, uh, Mondrian, mid-century, mid-century um, expressionism. And, uh, and and minimalism, you know, minimalism uh, plays a role in, in, in what I do. And uh, where do you create? Um, in a studio, in a, inside, or you go also outside, uh, in New York or another city? I've always worked in New York. I've, I've, never, I've never worked in Greece. In Greece, I, I visit for two, three weeks uh, at a time, once a year or maybe twice nowadays. Uh, not, I don't work in Greece. I, I sketch, I draw a lot, uh, and it's not related to anything that has to do with Greece. Uh, I work, I, have, I had a studio for 13 years in Long Island City. I had a studio shared with 10 other studios. Uh, I mean, I had my own space, but there were 10 artist studios, and there was a community of artists, and we had uh, open studios every year. Uh, and then I moved my studio, um, the last uh, 12 years, uh, my studio is at home. I have a, I have a nice, sizable uh, space. I actually run out of space now, <laughs> running out of space almost. How, but, I work at, but I work at home. How your, your family or your friends, uh, uh, you know, perceive that, how, how they, they received this new talent of yours? They were supportive, they were surprised. How, how how they reacted when they saw you my f also as a painter, just not only an architect? Yes. I think there is a generally an appreciative uh, demeanor. Um, they, my work is liked. It, my work is liked. I, I have lately noticed or become, became, uh, you know, I've had a, I've, I've had an exhibition running now, right now in Athens. And which I've is, no, which is this which one? is uh, which is this uh, the catalog is uh, this mm -hmm. is the catalog from the exhibition in Athens, and um, how many pieces you send there? 
I show there uh, 29 pieces. I see, that's a, 29, a, and, and some size, prints, yeah. yeah, about 15 prints. And um, I notice that people gravitate towards more, because uh, I do a little bit of some organic work. Organic means there's, you know, there's curves, and uh, my work is not uh, representational, and uh, there are no specific ideas behind it, because I just, they're visual ideas. But they're not related to any uh, events or persons or, um, uh, or any narrative. But I notice that people gravitate towards the more uh, organic type of work. My more austere, linear work is doesn't go... It's liked, but it's not the kind of work that people gravitate towards. It is um, uh, something uh, in, in painting, because you said your particular technique, you said, I like that, what, what you said, that it's not a particular place, or the, that a lot of Greeks, they, they use the Mediterranean colors, for example, but your colors, yes. your colors are, 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 you know, multiple, you have a whole area, uh, you know, uh, a spectrum of colors. How how you decide on, on the colors of a particular painting? Is this your moods? It is because you know interior design and architecture. Well, I draw a lot. My my uh, my paintings evolved out of a lot of uh, sketching and drawing that I do. And my first impulse is to do everything black and white. That's the that's the first impulse, to do everything black and white. And then uh, it's all improvisation, really, because once I start, sometimes the painting uh, is a little bit removed from the original idea uh, because of the process, you know, the messiness or whatever, or things I see. Uh, you know, I make visual connections while while working. It's like a musician who picks up a guitar in the studio and starts jamming. And, uh, you know, they, they, they evolved into different ideas. Um, so in the process, in the process of, com in the process of composing the painting, uh, I insert color. Yes. So I cannot say that my work is black and white. Far from it. Uh, there's quite a bit of color, but sometimes it's very sparse. Based on your experience, you, uh, you are in, in New York more than 50 years. Uh, do you think that the Greeks uh, understand, uh, appreciate art? Uh, do we have uh, Greek Americans who are serious art collectors? And it is important to have some. I, I am familiar with Greek American artists, you know, Greek artists in, in New York. I. Uh, I don't know of any collectors, personally, um, apart from one that collects my work uh, and a couple of other, you know, I've sold, I've sold some of my work and it belonged to some collections. I, I'm not aware of any of these big collectors who spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. I do not know. Because um, it is uh, well known that the Greek American community uh, they do a lot of uh, philanthropic work, or they collect money to build other things, but or to invest to other things. Uh, wh why the Greeks don't? The Greek Americans do not invest uh, to the arts, like other ethnic groups do, for it's example. A, it, I do not. You know, in the in the the events or so the uh, the events that I attend, which is usually. A symposium or a gallery exhibit, gallery open openings of uh, gallery exhibitions. I do encounter some Greek people. I am not aware that there are there are uh, Greek Americans or Greeks who are uh, who like the arts and who attend. They're not that many. Um, I don't know of any Greek collectors. I, I have because I have the Greek across, American yes, community yes. has achieved an enormous. Uh, uh, you know, uh, upward m mobility as far as concern socioeconomic status, education. Yes. Uh, in, other neighborhood, in other professional neighborhood spheres. Neighborhood mobility. Yes, yes, yes. So it is upper middle class status. And usually 
uh, when you uh, when someone is there, then uh, dealing with the arts, it is part of the group's behavior or yes. the individual's yes. behavior. Yes. But we see in, in many other ethnic uh, yes. or wrestler groups that we don't still we need to develop also our cultural mm. vision as a group. Well, do you think that the, some, do you blame the artists themselves uh, that they haven't done enough to make their presence aware within the community, or this is not the job that an artist should do? I think I think that artists want to um, push forward the work. They want to publicize the work. They want people to attend their exhibitions and be aware of what they do. Uh, a certain level of education or background or cultivation may be lacking among Greek Americans. Uh, I would say that perhaps the um, uh, the aesthetic taste of the average Greek American is uh, veers towards the traditional and the pictorial, and um, I don't think that modern art is all that much appreciated. Uh, and I wouldn't blame the Greek artist. We do the best. We do the best to promote our work, to show it, and to uh, gather a group of people. Um, the Greek consulate uh, hosts exhibitions uh, of various uh, Greek Greeks and Greek American artists. And As we do at Queen's College and the Hellenic American Project. Yes, we, we, yes. we organize. And, uh, I think that, and I think that in those events, uh, a lot of Greek Americans mm -hmm. do attend. Do they purchase work or not? I, I, I don't know. I'm doubtful. Mm -hmm. but, um, but also, uh, there is no a formal um, curriculum within the Greek American schools that uh, they teach the, the, the American-born Greeks now, the second, third, fourth generation, uh, any, anything about the history of Greek Americans or the Greek Americans and the arts. So there is no other way to to uh, communicate yeah. uh, the, 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 the cultural achievements of Greek Americans. I suppose artists. it's an individual pursuit. Uh, you know, it, it rests on the individual, but you are correct. It would be a good start that um, in, in the schools, uh, from, from very young grades, that they cultivate or they introduce a curriculum uh, with uh, of uh, of Greek art history, you know, through the um, at least the twentieth century, there are many there are many uh, uh, noticeable and good artists, good Greek artists, painters. I'm, I'm speaking about painters specifically. Many. Do you think you that uh, the Greek American community has a continuity, has a future? The future of Hellenism in in America will be short, longer. Will will st still continue to exist, having this consciousness about our Greekness, or we're going to be totally assimilated, as it happened with other European groups. It, my opinion is that I think that you know the Greek identity or the Greek consciousness is is a, is a strong element among Greeks, even even uh, first uh, second generation Greek Americans who are born here. There is there is I assume there is a very strong element of Greek consciousness of Greekness, so to speak, um, and uh, it, it will not fade. I don't think it will fade, but. Uh, a level of education is necessary to introduce, you know, the many aspects of Greek culture, painting, literature, music, poetry, that is not known here. There is no Greek bookstore anywhere in New York. You cannot buy a Greek book. Uh, there, there used to be, there used to be uh, Titan Foods that used to have uh, two or three books by Kazantzakis, and that's about it. That was all you could find in, in, in and also there's probably not a, not a lot of interest. Uh, it's it's also an individual. It, I think it's an individual pursuit. You know, the, the community doesn't make the individual, and the individual 
sometimes uh, has limited access to forming a, a consciousness among the community. What is a, a Greek uh, uh, strong value that you think should survive and, and be transmitted to the new generation? What, something that the Greeks have or the Greek culture has and you think it should survive the forces of assimilation that you like to see in the future? Philotimo. Philotimo. And sen a sense of integrity and uh, truthfulness. Um, it's always easier to follow the, the straight path. Uh, in Greek, we call it philotimo. How do we translate it in English? Uh, a sense of integrity mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and truthfulness, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So, I, think uh, that's, I think that's very strong among, uh, among, uh, among Greeks, yes. Yeah. If you want to share some of your um, great experience you had, also as a professional uh, in architecture and also as an artist, what you would advise to a young person who comes to New York these days? What would be a good, a good advice, let's say, or, or share experience? To, to remember yourself when you first came, what, what do you say to, to a young person now? Um, I, have a very, um, I have a very personal take on this. And um, uh, anyone coming here at a young age, I would advise not to stay too long. But if you have a career here, if you have a career, you can move your career back to Greece. <laughs> so how do you identify yourself? I identify myself as a Greek who lives in New York uh, with a very strong um, consciousness of um, the American culture and, uh, and, its, um, and its shortcomings. Um, yeah, I don't want to be negative, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm not very appreciative of American culture. There are many things that I like here, uh, especially um, uh, New York is a paradise of cinema. You can see amazing things here. Uh, I've lived here very long, 52 years already, and it's very difficult for me to repatriate. But if I had a choice, I would be living in Greece. And if I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I came to New York at the age of 30, 35, with the uh, experiences that I have now, I'd stay for a couple of weeks and go back and never come back.